Secondly, prayer. We live in a culture in which we know a lot about things, but have actually experienced very little. Some of us could have a huge discussion about what life is like in India because we saw a film. We read Wikipedia. (laughs) But have you experienced what those men, women, and children are going through? Have you experienced it? Do we actually experience what we talk about? Do we actually practice what we preach? Prayer is to be in communion with God, a a way that has been made for us by Jesus, who is our mediator, our high priest, and we have access to him. And so now we, we can pray, we can live in communion with God, pouring out our heart to him and listening to his voice. But do we practice it? See, if we tell everybody to pray or just talk about prayer, but never pray, you know what the Bible says we're like? In the book of Proverbs, it says we're like a cloud that never rains. Oh, look, it's a cloud, it's gonna rain. Oh, no, there's nothing in it. It's like we're basically all talk. See, that's why I talk about these things as being private spiritual disciplines, because you know what? I don't know. You don't know if I pray. I don't know if you pray, other than maybe we see fruit. So if we were to look even over our past week or few weeks or past month, how much was prayer a part of our lives? How much was prayer a part of our routine? How much was prayer a part of our schedule? It's true that we should be praying always, but we should also be spending time in prayer, adoring and praising God. Usually when we pray, it's like, I'm in need. (laughs) And that's not bad. God says, bring your needs to me. Cast your cares upon me. God's the giver of good gifts. But in our prayer, let's, let's deepen and broaden our prayer to include adoration and praise. Do we ever just, when we pray, just begin by saying, God, you are amazing, and I just want to to exalt you. I just want to praise you because you're sovereign, and you're good, and you're sweet, and you're merciful, and you're kind, and you're wonderful, and you're everlasting, and adoring and praising, and also asking and requesting what we need from God. God's glorified in that. Confessing and repenting in prayer. You see, in prayer, there's, you can't hide anything. I, like if, if my life was de- deteriorating spiritually, if your life was deteriorating spiritually, to a certain degree, for a certain length of time, we could probably pretend as though it were not, right? We're all really good about wearing a mask. But five seconds in the presence of Jesus in prayer, you can't hide anything. You know, some of you are, are like this with people right now. Jesus sees everything. And so you might as well confess it. The strangest thing would be in prayer to have knowledge in our own heart and mind of what we're doing that we shouldn't be doing and then pretend it doesn't exist in prayer. It would be like me sitting on my laptop looking at something I shouldn't right next to my wife. What are you doing? Nothing. So we might as well confess and just be like, Lord, forgive me. And that's why Jesus died, was to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from our shame and our guilt and turning away from those things. But lastly, in our prayer, we should be believing and receiving. Now that I've confessed that, I believe, and I I rehearse the stuff I learn in scripture in my prayers. I'm like, God, you've declared me to be righteous in Jesus, even though I'm not righteous in myself and I'm justified and you've given me the Holy Spirit to empower me in this life and you love me and your love will never end for me and you're for me and not against me. And in prayer, you're apprehending those things for yourself. 